A lot of people rightfully don't fully understand pro lighting equipment. They don't understand what it is, how it works, and why you need this as a pro, perhaps over some different types of things. Now, this is not brand specific. It just happens that I have Broncolor, but this is the same for Broncolor, Prophoto, Elinchrom, Brees, whatever you're using for your work. Let's break down what it is we're using, what it does, how it works, and why you might need it as a pro. And this is as a pro, if you're a hobbyist, whatever, you don't need to go and spend extreme amounts of money. Now, the first thing is the pack and head system. Now, this is something that a lot of beginners, myself included, when I was a beginner, I didn't just know this stuff, a lot of us don't understand. Here is a light. Let me take this little protective cap off. It's a light. It looks like heavy flash and it has a little plug on it, but instead of going into the wall, it goes into one of these. And this is where people get a little bit confused to start with. We'll go into other stuff later, but this is the first hurdle. I've also got a dog down here today. Professional lights are incredibly powerful. This head here is a 3200 joule head. Now, a lot of us, we say it's a 3200 watt head or 3200 watt head, depending if you're American or not. It's actually not a 3200 watt head. It's just what everyone says. And because everyone says it, we all say it. In every video where I say 3200 watts, someone in the comments leaves an essay about why it's not watts. We know it's not watts, it's just what we all say. But it's a 3200 joule head. This here has a flash tube, a modeling light, and a cooling fan. That is all that's in here. Now, if you have a light that doesn't plug into one of these and it plugs into the wall, it also has capacitors in there, and they're what fire the flash, get the electricity going, and bang it out as light. The problem is your light probably isn't 3200 joules of light. This here is what would be living in this here should you plug it into the wall. When it's this much light, you need big capacitors and many of them. And because of that, it becomes very big and very cumbersome. It would not be particularly useful to have a light this big plus the size of that in one unit. It doesn't work very well. So what we do is we plug this into here and then this particular one is mains only. So this has, the electric comes in here from the wall, standard 13 amp plug, and it goes into here, does all the jiggery pokery, comes out of here into the head. Now it might be picking up on here, let me get a bit closer to it, but there's a fan on the back of this and that keeps this bit cool. There's fans in here as well. Now what you're seeing here, which is going to ruin my exposure and white balance, is the modeling lamp. And a lot of people get confused when I'm doing a behind the scenes video, they see that light and go, how is it bright enough? That is just the modeling lamp. And it's called a modeling lamp because it allows you to model the light. So when I turn it on, I can see exactly what it's going to do, where it's going to go, all of that good stuff. You see, nice bit of modeling. It works really well for that. It gets hot, it melts grids. When this ball pops, the fuse pops, when the fuse pops, the light stops working, there's a whole load of nonsense in there, but it's a pretty useful bit of kit. You can turn them on and off at the back here, but we tend to do it at the pack or in the app. Now the flash itself, which is this bit, I'm not sure if you saw it, but you'll have definitely heard the, the little beep. That is what's lighting it. Now to you on camera, it looks like nothing. This looks more powerful than this. But if we turn this up to full blast, That was 3,200 joules of power. That is a lot of light. That is a lot of light. You can't see it here, but that is a lot of light. It's so much light that even though I'm lighting myself here with window light, this flash here, if we set the aperture correctly on a camera, would be so bright that the window light all disappears. Now, if this is all sounding alien to you, I have an entire workshop on the beginnings of basics of lighting. I'll pop a link down below somewhere. I'll probably forget, but this is the fundamentals of it. This is the kit, but let's talk about why. Why is it we have 3,200 joules of light? What makes that a requirement? You're probably thinking, Scott, 400 watts. I'd be great with that. I'm saying watts already after telling you it's not watts. You're gonna have to live with it. We all say it. Everyone in the industry says, if I phone up my rental place and go, can I have 10, 3200 watt lights? They know this is what I want. So the power we have here and the power we need is all down to a couple of things. And it, and it is needed. If someone tells you, oh, you, can, you don't have to use that much light, you do. Physics tells us that we do. There's this wonderful thing which every photographer must know called the inverse square law. If you don't know it, go and learn it. 
it will blow your little mind. If I want to light, say this table here, I want the whole table lit evenly. This table is about 1.5 meters wide. This light must be eight meters away from it. That is a non-negotiable. That is a non-negotiable. Of course, we can have it closer and bounce light back into it. But if we have multiple items on this table, the shadows are going to change from the bounce light. This light must be eight meters away, minimum. If we want it to be super sharp, 10 meters away. Crisp shadows, even lighting. And at that distance, you need 3200 watts. You just do. And of course, with a good reflector, it helps a little bit. Maybe a 1600 watt light would be enough sometimes, but then the client goes, oh, can we get rid of this hotspot? And you start bringing flags and bits like that in, and the light gets eaten up, or the modifier you use isn't an efficient modifier, and you need this much light. This is why pros use these big packs. It's not because they're so expensive and fancy, it's because these are the tools to do the job. Now, if you don't need even light and you want the light to be closer, of course, you can use a lower light power. That, that's, you know, obvious. But generally speaking, that is why we have the 3200 watts. Now, each of these packs here does 3200 watts, and you can, and my ones, put two heads into them. Some take three, some take four. Of course, as you add heads, you divide the power by them. And it works differently on all, I won't go into all the different asymmetric packs and stuff, but it kind of works differently. We tend to use one pack, one head. Sometimes two, but the way we like with very high power, we need a, a pack per head pretty much. There's more that this does though. There's more to it. A good quality pro pack offers brilliant color and power consistency. And what that means is, if I have this one here on full power and the next pack on 1 16th power, one, every time this one fires full power, it does it exactly the same, and that one does it the same on 1 16th, but two, and much more importantly as a professional, both of them produce the same white balance. Now, a lot of brands, when they talk about their white balance accuracy, they're talking about power to power. So it might be plus or minus 300 kelvins, for example. That's a spurious number. But this will be plus or minus, I think it's pretty much nothing, but across the power range, and that's where it matters. Because if you've got one head being plus or minus 300 at full power, another one being plus or minus 300 at 16th, or it gets even worse, though, it, it becomes a nightmare when you're doing shots with multiple lights or shots which are composites and you're having to adjust the white balance on every single frame. And that's bad enough with a one light setup if you're having to do that. If you've got a three light setup and all three lights are doing different white balances all the time ever so slightly, pulling that together, not good. Great for focus stacking as well, pro lights are. Anything from pro photo or Elenchrom, I don't have any particular preference over which, well, no, I prefer bronze color, but like I shoot pro photo all the time. They both work really well. It does a great job of just getting that consistency out there. And the big thing for us still life people or sports photographers or anyone, anything moving is the flash duration, the T0.1. And that is what lets us freeze motion. It's not shutter speed, it's the flash duration. And that is how quickly the light goes from being there to disappearing. It of course looks very quick when you just fire the flash. But in reality, it's actually taking maybe, well, I can tell you exactly. On full power, this takes 175th of a second to fire. But as we turn this down, apologies for the beeps, and we go into our little thing here, we've got now, at a lower power, 1 8,000th of a second. Now here's why that's important, and it's important to pay attention here. The camera that we're shooting with here will see my studio as pitch black. Even though you can see me here with light in, if I let me go and grab my camera, here it is. We're currently on this video camera at 1600 ISO at f2.8. If I bang this bad boy here onto 100 ISO f16, this room is pitch black. There is no light. It doesn't matter if my shutter speed is 125th or a second until I leave it open long enough to actually let light in. As long as there's no light bleeding in, we get a blank frame at the start. All it sees is that 1 8,000th of a second and that will freeze motion better than shutter speed will. For many reasons, if you want a video on that, I can go through exactly why it works better than high speed sync, shutter speed or anything else, but that's the other reason we use it. So we've talked about power, we've talked about how they work. Let's also talk about the functionality of having a pack here and a head here. 
Firstly, this head is light. I can put it on a C-stand boom arm, which is really not designed to hold lights, they're more like accessory stands. But they're so light they can go onto that. And whilst it's up in the air, flailing around, I can just adjust the power on the pack here or via the app. That's very useful. Also, because they're very small, you can get them in very small spaces. You can have them all next to each other without any real issue. And when you want that fast shutter speed, the T-score, and you've got it down at eight thousandth of a second, the power on these flashes has to be very low. So often, we'll have six of them teed up next to each other, making one light power source, but with lots of small firing. So we'll have loads of packs on light. Well, I'd still call it a one light setup because it's one direction of light, but we kind of like put them all in a little thing together and shoot them in one go gives us the aperture we need, the power we need, but the flash duration we need as well. And because they're small, you can get them all next to each other. I mean, I've never seen a 3,200 joule head. They may exist, I don't know, but Bron color, no, Bowens make a 1500 watts back in the day. And I used to have one and it'd go from here to here. And it's about this wide and it's so heavy it had to go in a special stand. It was a nightmare. It's just, you know, and even like things like just adjusting it like this, you tighten it up and then it'd slowly droop down because of the weight of the whole thing. So that's why these are so good. That's why we like them. They're very well built, they're metal. These are well built as well. You know, I mean, all lights are well built nowadays. There's no, there's no real like bad light in the world, is there? Now, there are other variations of this sort of setup. You can get these new packs by Broncolor, which also take batteries. So you don't have to have it plugged in like this. A lot of people assume this is a battery pack. This is a mains pack. You can get battery packs. You can get ones that do, from, I think Broncolor's called them the Satos. It was mains and battery in one pack. This generation of lights here, you had this one here, or you had a Move pack, which was a smaller one. I used to have a Pixapro AD1200. That was battery and mains within a pack. There's a whole world of stuff. And I think it's Pro Photo that make heads that take batteries and also have battery packs and have the big capacitors like this and the heads. There's a whole world of different types of kit to suit your needs. But I thought it was worth going over because I get so many questions in, in the comment section like, is this a battery pack? I can't see the light. How is it doing that? All those sorts of things. I thought this might just help explain it a little. I hope that's been of some use to you. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. If you have any questions about lighting, do let me know because, well, I'd like to answer them. If you've got any questions about lighting, pop them in the comments below because I'd love to make a video for you to sort of help you understand what is kind of the dark art of photography. Perfect. Let's do this other video.